Hello Collectors, it's Chris the Batman Statue Collector and welcome back once again to Brotherhood of the Bat Collectibles and I'm so incredibly excited because we have a very special guest on the channel today, artist and sculptor Ryan Peterson, absolutely incredible. Now you might know him from Sideshow Collectibles, he's been doing the life-size busts, but he also has done a whole bunch of other things as well for Sideshow and I'm very, very pumped and excited to have him on the channel. It is such an incredible honor and uh, I just cannot wait to interview him today. But before we do that, if you're new here, please Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and click that notification bell. Make sure you choose all, that way you don't miss any of this content. So without further ado, let's interview Ryan. So Ryan, thank you so very much for being here. Uh, it just means the world to me. Hi Chris. Hey, thanks for uh, this interview. This is really cool. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Again, it's just such an honor to have you here on the show today uh, to be part of the Brotherhood of the Bat. You are an absolutely amazing, absolutely incredible artist. And I have a number of questions to ask you, and so uh, let's just get started, okay? So question number one is this. Uh, tell us a little bit about your art background and how you first got involved in the field. I was raised in a, in a small, uh, very rural town in northern Utah. And... Um, I, rather than gravitating towards hunting a lot of the other stuff there, uh, which is the dominant culture, I was in total contrast. So um, I was a monster kid. So uh, dinosaurs, Ray Harryhausen, um, anything fantastical just seized my imagination at a young, as a young boy. So yeah, that that. It was just a given. I mean, there, I, I think I was just born that way uh, as a monster kid, like so many people are. But I really, really um, uh, was just fascinated by, by dinosaurs, uh, as, as a lot of boys are and a lot of kids are. And uh, it just never stopped. Um, uh, I would watch every kind of fantasy or horror movie I could. Um, whether it was Planet of the Apes or, or Hammer Films, whatever was on a Saturday afternoon. So, so yeah, d definitely. My background was a rural town, country boy who was rather incongruent with the country. So. All right, so question number two is this. Uh, I noticed that a lot of your work is inspired by the horror genre. Uh, how does the dark elements inspire your work? Um... Because most of the dark elements, if you want to call it that, um, were from horror movies or dinosaurs. Um, so, as opposed to, um, uh, you know, uh, a lot of my cousins would um, would draw deer and wildlife uh, scenes or whatever, and that just wasn't me because it's not what I. Um, was inspired by, and I think um, dark art, eh, it's, it, for the lack of a better description, it's a bit of a pejorative. Uh, just maybe uh, just surreal, um, supernatural, um, fantastical um, uh, themes just uh, just seized me, and uh, and I think a lot of people like me. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So how did you first get involved with sculpting? One Christmas, I, I think I was maybe even four or five, I, I received some Crayola clay and um, loved it immediately. Um, it was the kind of clay that had multicolored and I think there were like five colors, little strips that you could peel off. You could mix them and form your own colors if you wanted to. And um, it was my medium. I mean, I always drew, but uh, clay, uh, I never was too frustrated working in clay. And, and oftentimes drawing frustrated me. Drawing, you have to, if you can, convey three-dimensionality on a 2D surface that was frustrating. Perspective was frustrating, a little difficult. Although I was, you know, I could draw. My degrees in painting and drawing. Clay just kind of um, jumped that gap and it was just, yep, yeah, it's just right there. Just make the three-dimensional <laughs> ball of clay something recognizable. 
So, yeah, and one particular um, moment that sticks out, uh, my dad decided he would sculpt with me. And he was going to sculpt a little human head. And so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll sculpt one simultaneously. And he just had a toothpick, and I can't remember what I had. Um, and after about an hour, I didn't see what he was doing until he was finished after an hour. And when I saw it, it just blew my mind. My dad's naturally talented. Both my parents actually are. But he had sculpted this small head. And, and keep in mind, this is when I was about six years old. He had sculpted this small little head about three inches high. And he had put forms in it. He put all the cavities and forms that are in the ear in this little head. Yeah, it was just, it was, he took it to a, a more detailed refined level and it just blew my mind. I was so excited and uh, from that point on in addition to dinosaurs and monsters I started sculpting human heads. So that was the introduction of anatomy and the importance of, of anatomy to be able to um, sculpt well. Alright so do you prefer digital sculpting or the more traditional classic sculpting and uh, why did you choose one over the other? I like them both. I, I sculpted with clay for 40 years, so I'll never completely abandon it. Um, I love the tactile quality of it. Um, but my eyesight's getting worse. I'm 50 years old, and I'm starting to really feel it now. It's hard for me to see, so I have to uh, utilize many different magnifying <laughs> elements just to be able to do what I took for granted, you know, 10 years ago. That said, digital, I don't have to worry about that so much with digital. You can zoom in and it's not a problem, but I love digital as well. Digital has um, liberated me as far as design. I mentioned earlier I was a little impatient with drawing, but um, digital, whether it's Photoshop or being able to design in ZBrush, it's just liberating. A revolution, um, or I should say revelation. Um, so I don't think I, I prefer one of the, the over the other. They both have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, I think uh, digital, the danger with digital is homogenization of, of what's being created out there. Um, we're all using the same tools that ZBrush provides and we all get inspiration from the references we see. So uh, even the most seasoned artists can't help but to want to emulate something that's impressed them. So, um, and what ends up happening is everything starts to look alike. Or, um, individuality gets lost. I used to be able to see sculptures, traditional sculptures in clay, and you could identify the artist. They left their signature. It's harder to do now. Um, a lot of, um, a lot of young artists' work starts to look alike. Granted, it's beautiful work, but um, but maybe not as original as as what the limitations of clay can provide. I mean, uh, there are only so many tools that you can work with in clay, and ultimately, you end up in the same place. Whether it's a, a rake tool or a loop tool or when I started sculpting in clay, I used pen lids. But ultimately, you refine a piece and it gets to where you want it to go. Um, with digital, some of these um, stages are almost too easy. And so what happens is, is um, a, a focus, a disproportionate focus on detail. And which is, it's details of learning. I mean, I, I love it too, <laughs> especially in ZBrush. But uh, it takes a discipline to try to resist getting to the detail stage because this, the prior stages were a little bit easier than they were, say, in clay. But um, no, I don't have a favorite. Digital just is easier for me right now just to, due to eyesight and design. But um, the, what's so cool about working with Sideshow is that they um, let me do both. And prior to working with Sideshow, which was in 2015, that's when I began, um, 
as a, as a freelancer for them. I hadn't sculpted in, in a number of years, so my skills were slipping. Um, so I'm very grateful to them for, for allowing me to get back into clay. And let me tell you, it was tough. I had, my, my skills had slipped. And I even had panic attacks where I, I, I figured just making a symmetrical sculpture was extremely difficult because of being conditioned in ZBrush to be able to mirror what you're sculpting. So just all these little stages that I, that didn't bother me so much before were really difficult. And also pacing, um, uh, digital you can sculpt quicker. And so when going back to clay, I had to adjust to the progress, uh, the slower progress of it. So it took me a good couple weeks before I stopped having panic attacks, <laughs> feeling like I had lost my skills. But um, yeah, hopefully I can keep maintaining a balance so I don't have to go through those panic attacks again. So you have made some absolutely outstanding pieces for Sideshow Collectibles. How did you first get involved working with them? So I was working in, um, in 2015 here in Salt Lake City uh, for a company called Disney Interactive. They're a gaming company. And I was just, um, really wasn't doing, I just started. I was in a six month contract and was just finishing up that six month contract. Um, just doing, you know, um, these uh, very stylized Disney characters for this game, Disney Infinity. And I wasn't even really sculpting much. I was just kind of posing things. Um, but my intention was to <clears throat> stay with Disney and uh, hopefully, you know, just get back into the pipeline of design and sculpting. But then I, I received a call when my contract was almost up about three weeks prior uh, by an old friend who I'd worked with in the makeup effects industry. His name's Jesse Lincoln. And Jesse is a um, project manager for Sideshow. And he and another project manager, Anthony Maestas, uh, had seen some of my work online, my recent stuff. Jesse knew me, but Anthony didn't. But I think Anthony responded well to a Yeti sculpture I'd done. It actually was, a, it was an award winner for Spectrum, the Spectrum publication, and um, so that's that's how I fell into the radar of Anthony. But then Jesse knew me, so Jesse called me and just yes yeah, asked if I'd like to to do some work for them, and uh, I had to make a decision of whether to stay with Disney, assuming they they extended my contract or put me on full time or. Um, transfer over to Sideshow and I love Sideshow's work and it was it would have and I knew it'd be great to work with Jesse again and and the creative director Tom Gilliland who I, I worked with uh, both he and Jesse uh, I worked with uh, Rick Bakers um, in the, the mid late 90s so I knew these guys and I respected them and liked them so I, this was a great opportunity to get back doing um, some interesting uh, sculpting and design and that's pretty much how that started and that was in 2015 and it's continued to this day and uh, it's been great I love it I, I have a lot of respect for Sideshow I, I respect their emphasis on, on quality and and I, I respect the, the enormous talent of men and women they have working for them it's it's really astounding so yeah any place where you can work amongst highly talented people delivering quality um, it's, it's that's that's as good as it gets so so yeah Jesse, Jesse Lincoln called me and I said yes I'm really glad I did <laughs> so was it your decision to do the life-size bust and to sculpt those uh, also would you uh, like to do some of the full-size figures as well no it wasn't Jesse I had started out doing some digital work for Sideshow I think there were some Star Wars pieces they, um, and then um, Jesse approached me about doing a, a bust out of clay, a one-to-one -one bust out of clay, and um, resume their one-to-one -one bust line, 
which I think had been ceased for a couple of years. Um, uh, really talented art sculptors such as um, Steve Wang, Andy Bergholtz, um, Matthew Black had done some one-to-one -one portraits before and they're, they're fantastic. So I, I jumped at the chance, but I was a little nervous. Uh, uh, starting in clay since I hadn't sculpted, like I said before, for a couple of years. But it all came back eventually, and I think the first bust I did was um, Deadpool. And uh, I didn't even know the character, uh, I'm ashamed to say. But once I realized how uh, popular Deadpool was, I was going, okay, this, this could be fun. <laughs> and the movie came out. Um, oh, around the same time as the bust was revealed, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, it was all sideshow. Sideshow decided to do it. I guess based on my background, perhaps they they knew that I could do this uh, practically, and um, they've been a blast. Um, as far as full figures, full scale figures, no, I, I, I haven't done anything like that. And I don't think anyone really is doing something like that at Sideshow at the moment. Um, it's mainly digital work. So, um, and, and, and I've done uh, figurative full-scale digital work for them. Um, or the Court of the Dead pieces, I've done a couple of those. And I'm currently working on some uh, full-figure uh, uh, digital uh, pieces. Um, but yeah, I, I, I kind of hope we get back into the busts. They're a lot of fun. So. so do you have a favorite bust that you've worked on so far for Sideshow? Uh, yes, I have two. So I think they would, it would be the Hulk and Venom. Mainly because uh, I love fleshy organic shapes and forms. Um, hard surface stuff doesn't excite me so much. You can't um, improvise. And I like to improvise with um, with uh, my, my my sculpting, and and um, Hulk's as bad as fleshy <laughs> as you can get. Uh, same with Venom. Uh, you can just you can you can even work on a little fleshy area, find a find its logic, and then continue it onto the rest of the pieces, which is what I did with um, Venom. And then uh, the Hulk was so much fun because it was just a matter of exaggerating um, anatomy, uh, bone structure, forms, and just seeing how far you can push things. And, and the Hulk is, is just, uh, by definition, anatomy pushed to its extremes. So that was, that was a lot of fun. So definitely uh, the Hulk and Venom. So I have to ask this, of course, being the Batman statue collector, but uh, if you could work on any DC villain, which would it be and why? Um, Killer Croc would be fun. That would be a blast. Two-Face would be a blast. Um, again, because you could play with anatomy, um, Killer Croc, I, I love monsters, and that's very monstrous of a character. So yeah, those two would be um, a lot of fun pushing the stylization and the anatomy. Um, I guess when you work on anatomy or work on organic sculptures, the, the better you have an intuitive flesh logic, the better the piece. And I still find myself um, relying on anatomy books but I also know that I can wing it if I had to. And that just comes with experience and acquiring a kind of flesh logic, um, how, how shapes, uh, muscles, and bone relate to each other. And um, so, yeah, I feel like that's, that's a, a more powerful tool in my arsenal, is to be able to just, I know I can improvise um, organic shapes because um, because of the flesh logic I've been able to hone throughout the years. All right, so very, very cool. So uh, what would be a dream piece that you would love to work on from any genre? Um, let me see. I, th 
I've been lucky. I've, I've had the chance to work on a lot of cool characters. Uh, Cthulhu for a, f a film festival. I designed the award for it, so I did a Cthulhu. Um, I worked on Spider-Man with um, Tobey Maguire, and I, I did some... I got to design the Green Goblin, although it changed into a mask, but I had actually worked on a makeup. Um, so, yeah, I've, and you know, just the line of bus for Sideshow have been great. But I think if there was a, a dream piece or a dream project, I think it'd be fun to do a Bigfoot. Um, yeah, uh, I've never been entirely convinced by some of the Bigfoot designs I've seen in films and in, in print media. Um, Harry and the Hendersons was, of course, fantastic. But since then, a lot of designs have just kind of copied it. They, they feel like Harry, kind of. And uh, so, of course, if you're going to design Bigfoots, you'd want to have a, a cool project, a good vehicle to do that, to do them in. And I just read over the summer the book Devolution by Max Brooks. It's a really fun read. And, oh man. I would love there, you know, of course, it's about Bigfoot and uh, and a family of Bigfoot, Big Feet. <laughs> and uh, I would love to be able to design those. Um, I would incorporate all the ideas I have for designing a very naturalistic and believable Bigfoot based on just the research I've done. You know, it, uh, it doesn't even matter whether I, I think Bigfoot is real or not. There's just so much information in the zeitgeist. So m it's such a myth, mythological, um, archetypal character now that it would be really f enjoyable to be able to um, do a present day design of Bigfoot. And, and if they ever do the m adaptation of Devolution into a movie or series, ugh, that would be a dream project. And then, of course, uh, we can get Sideshow to do a line of figures or busts <laughs> uh, right around the time the movie or series is out. So, yeah, anything Bigfoot would be fantastic. I know fellow collectors are going to want me to ask this. So, do you collect anything? And if you do, what do you collect? I don't. I really don't collect much of anything. Um, I used to collect monster magazines but um, now you know it's interesting once you reach a certain age well, I can always speak for myself the need to acquire stuff lessens and you find yourself at least I find myself wanting to lighten the load and lighten my footprint so I'm actually getting rid of things so no I'm not a collector I'm not a collector um, I kind of wish I were though um, because those that are really into it, it's a passion of theirs, and man, there's nothing better than having a, a passion, truly. All right, so our final question is this. Uh, what do you hope to accomplish in the next 10 years as an artist? Hmm. That's a good question. Originality um, in my own fine art um, and quality in whatever commercial work I'm, I'm lucky enough to get. As a freelance artist, I'm just glad to get work at this point. Um, and then even better if I can uh, deliver quality. And, and so Sideshow, their ethic is something that I, I respect and feel in sync with. So if I can continue to work for them, that would be great. If not, um, uh, it would be fun to get back into film. Um, doing designs, so I, I certainly wouldn't rule that out. Um, but accomplished in the next 10 years, eh, I'm, I just take it day by day. I try to listen to my intuition and for any ideas that may um, bubble up and, and be able to differentiate what are the good ideas and not. Because once you seize an idea, you know, it, you, you got to be excited about it and hope that it's going to um, be worth your time. So I just hope to be able to keep hearing and receiving good ideas that I can then realize 
whether it's uh, commercial stuff, uh, an idea on how to interpret a commercial piece, or a fine art idea. Um, because I, and, and this gets back to I'm actually, my degree is in fine art. And, and so uh, that seed that was planted in my uh, late teens, early 20s, it, it's, it's grown. And, and, and I'm, I'm seeing the value uh, of, uh, for society in, in pure, honest expression, um, creativity. And you can do both in your own fine art work. So yeah, in the next 10 years, I just hope to remain productive um, and uh, keep m making money on the side, surviving by working with great uh, companies like Sideshow, or uh, and or or you know even some of the effects studios um, if they're still around. So yeah, try to try to keep open to um, both of those. So there you guys have it. I want to thank Ryan. Thank you again so very much for being on the show. This was absolutely amazing. I absolutely love to feature artists here on the channel. And again, just thank you so very much for taking the time to come on the channel today. You're absolutely amazing. So again, thank you. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this interview, what you think of Ryan's amazing sculptures. And uh, again, just thank you guys so very much for tuning in. If you are new here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button and click that notification bell. Make sure you choose all. That way you don't miss any of the content. Also make sure you check out some of our t-shirts and hoodies down below. That does help support the channel very, very much. And again, just thank you guys for spending a little bit of time right here on the Brotherhood of the Bat Collectibles. I'll see you next time right here in the Bat Cave. Bye everybody. Uh, thank you so much for um, allowing me to do this. This was a pleasure. So anyway, you take care and, and thanks again. I sure appreciate it. Hey guys, thank you so very much for watching today. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button right here on the screen and check out these two awesome videos. I think you're going to love them. And also please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I would love to have you join in all the fun. Thank you guys so very much for watching. See you in the Batcave.